Some of the assistants, collaborators, and the PCA candidates, may the Lord God bless you greatly in the name of the Lord Jesus. How are you today? I believe you're well, and I would like to know where you are watching us from. As you know, we are doing the purpose uh, to hallow the name of God, based in a prayer, in the model prayer the Lord Jesus taught his, his disciples. As you know, we have to sanctify his name every single day, every single day through our lives, our behavior. And of course, throughout this program, we're going to talk about this matter. By the way, I have here today, tonight with me, Assistant Mariana. Good night, good evening, Mariana. Good evening, Pastor. So, uh, Mariana, which is an assistant from our, uh, our church in Portuguese here in Finsbury Park, she will tell us afterwards her testimony. Because Assistant Mariana, uh, she was uh, even an assistant, she was raised as an assistant without the Holy Spirit. And for her, it was like a, some issues that he, she faced throughout this process. Until the day she came and she asked for help. Of course, later on, she will be sharing that to us. But for now, I would like you to pay close attention to this video. And by the way, in, I would like you to share now uh, the link of Liberty Radio to the assistance of your branch. Because we are live here now and all of them, they should connect because this is story, this, her testimony will bless you. Let us watch this video. I'll be right back. Every now and again, we come across controversies in the world of sports, especially from brands that want to stay away from people with a bad reputation. Who can forget the many cases where football players were accused of being involved in instances of sexual abuse. As a result, countless companies cancel their partnerships and stop supporting athletes in fear of associating their name with those who are being investigated. Let's look at some instances. In October 2020, the traditional Santos Football Club lost the equivalent of £500,000 after signing striker Robinho. This was because the Otho Pride company did not want their brand associated with the player, who at the time was being convicted of rape in Italy. A spokesperson for the brand stated that they had taken the decision out of respect for women. We have tremendous respect for Santos's history, but at this point, we have decided to terminate the sponsorship contract. Our audience is mostly female, and out of respect for the women who buy our products, we had to make that decision. We want to make it clear that we were not previously informed about Robinho's signing. We were taken by surprise by the news over the weekend. This was expressed in a statement by Richard McGrath, the Chief Operations officer at the time. In 2022, there was another scandal involving football defender Danny Alves, accused of sexual assault. After his arrest, he had his contract terminated by his then Mexican football club, Pumas. He also suffered the termination of three more sponsorship deals. One was from a financial services and insurance company, another from a sports betting company, and lastly from a clothing firm. Adidas also decided to not renew Alves's contract, which was expiring shortly after. They all stated that they would not be able to continue having the player represent their brands until he was acquitted of the accusations. Lastly, 
There is the most famous case with Neymar and Nike. The Brazilian lost their sponsorship contract worth $105 million and a 15-year-long relationship. There were previous forecasts of the contract being extended, but this was interrupted in 2020. This was due to an alleged lack of cooperation by Neymar with the investigations into him being accused of sexual assault against an employee of the sporting brand. Associating a person's image to brands, companies or institutions is becoming ever more common. According to research, influencer advertising is projected to reach a little under £1 billion in 2024. This data serves to demonstrate just how the public behaves as to whether they research the products they are buying or if they simply trust the person who represents the brand. Sometimes you see like when they're when they're advertising stuff, you can see it there and then. But I don't I don't buy it. I don't buy stuff on the spot. Maybe maybe I'll go back and have a look at it. Uh, yeah, I have, but it's only mainly been like celebrities instead of influencers. So like Selena Gomez and people like that, rather than like any influencer. I mainly like the people that I trust online. I literally like blindly buy what they recommend. Anyone who carries the name of the Lord Jesus is his servant, his representative, and every action of theirs in and out of the church is studied. Everything that a servant of God says or does is before everyone to see. In the world of sports, an athlete with bad behavior loses their contract, which is oftentimes worth millions. In the spiritual world, a person loses the presence of God, a priceless asset. Remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Analyzing your life today, how is your relationship with God? As you know, God can, get, God cannot relate his name with a servant who is a bad example. God cannot use someone, a servant, a so-called assistant or pastor, whatever, you name it, who doesn't glorify him. And that's the reason we are doing this purpose, so that you, as an assistant, you may sanctify his name everywhere. This video that we just watched, you saw examples, celebrities, that as soon as they were involved in scandals, so a, a famous brand could not support them anymore because it is a matter of losing money and the credibility. So if here we see this happening, we see this happening uh, in the business world, I should say, imagine in the spiritual life, in the relationship with God. So God cannot keep his spirit, and as the verse which was showed uh, in the video, which is very strong, if the person doesn't repent, if that servant doesn't repent, indeed he will come and there will not be chance. So right now, each servant is having this opportunity to, to look at him to look at his own life, how he is behaving at work, at home, or even when you are alone by yourself, when there is no one looking at you. Sometimes you say, well, at work I am a, I, I am a good example, at home I am a good example, but when you are by yourself, especially when you are watching videos or checking your phone, perhaps you do not sanctify his name. No one is seeing 
the bad example, but God sees. If the person, if the servant doesn't repent, the servant will not be able to serve until the end. And this is why it's important that you may look uh, at you and uh, take this purpose to heart. So, remember that on the 10th, we are going to have, on the 10th of February, we are going to have this special assistance meeting here in Finsbury Park and, of course, outside London. We'll connect through uh, video conference in their branches at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And, by the way, on the same day, we will have the graduation of the new collaborators. Look at that last assistance meeting. We had the graduation of the new assistants and then now the graduation of the new collaborators. It's going to be powerful. Make sure you come and join us. And uh, I believe you have also the card. Do you have the card? Are you meditating every single day on the Word of God? Not. Why? If you're not reading the Bible, you have to, because this is very strong. Okay? Well, talking about how uh, sanctifying the name of our Lord, I'm going to talk now to Assistant, assistant Mariana, which is an assistant from uh, the Portuguese church here in Finsbury Park. Mariana, you were telling me uh, that uh, you, you were called to be an assistant, and that there was even someone, one assistant that wanting to help you. She made a mistake, not a sin. But the way how she behaved with you literally put you in the work of God without the Holy Spirit. Could you please explain to us what happened? Yes, Pastor. Uh, I believe uh, for sure her intention was very good. Like mm -hmm. She wanted to see me uh, to move forward. But um, what happened was I was already around two, about two years in the church and I was firm. I was... Taking, I, it didn't take me long to start taking things seriously in my faith because I had left the church for about six years. So when I came back, I started to take things seriously straight away. So I soon converted, uh, got baptized, and of course I started to be more involved in the work of God. I mean, evangelizing with mm -hmm. the group. So at some point this person approached me to ask me if I had the desire to serve as an assistant and to talk about the, the next PCA that was about to start. And straight away, straight away, I told her that I want to serve God, I would like to serve, but I'm not ready because I don't have the Holy Spirit. But because she had good reference about me from another assistant that was closer to me at the time, she started to invest. So speaking to me to understand why don't you have the Holy Spirit? What's the problem? And she started saying things like, the Holy Spirit is not a feeling, you have to believe, you have to analyze your life, the fruits of your life. So, to be honest, I wasn't anxious to be an assistant. I wasn't in a rush for the title or anything like that. But I wanted so much to move forward in my faith that this conversation started to create kind of a conflict inside of me because I started to think, well, though, no, maybe I am... I'm allowing doubts to hold me back. Maybe I have the Holy Spirit. So I started to get really confused because looking at uh, analyzing my life, I could see what in my understood was was the what I understood was the I had the fruits of the Holy Spirit because I have changed so much. I wasn't sad anymore. But the thing was, okay, I have the Holy Spirit, but when did it happen? Because I could, I didn't, I never had that assurance that everyone would talk about in the testimonies. So I started to think back, and then I remember um, a specific day that I had an experience with God, but up until this point, I didn't think I had the Holy Spirit. So I started to figure out, you know, based on on this, and to cut the story short, I that's how I I started doing the PCA and entered the work of God. And okay. Now you were there as an, a became a collaborator, an assistant of the church. And what was the moment that you figured out that, okay, I am not sinning, 
I am serving God, but is missing something. Tell me what happened for you to come to this, the conclusion, because as you said, you, were, you had that experience with God, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit yet. You did not have the presence of God inside of you yet. And the, the certainty that everyone had, you did not have. So, when was the moment that you said, uh oh, something is, is strange? When it happened, could you please share to us? So, uh, I was raised past in November 2015. In February the following year, I was already in the UK. So, I basically started learning here with the assistant in my branch and I was everything was fine I was serving God I was uh, living a life to please God I was happy to serve God but um, from time to time a little doubt would come back and this uh, was a battle because when you have doubts you are divided you like it drains you then drains your strength you are so divided so I was confused I felt so limited Physically, I was doing what everybody else was doing, like I was serving, I was active in the church. But although I wasn't sinning spiritually, it was like there was something there. Mm. It wasn't right. And I didn't know exactly, you know, I was so, so confused, so lost at this point. And I would speak to people, to other assistants, because I was trying to solve to uh, other assistants, to pastors, to pastors' wives. I was, I, I didn't want to be like that. And I was so, it was exhausting, really, because from time to time, like Friday services, I was afraid. And then the other Friday, I was okay. Like it was up and down. And I was really tired to be like this. Mm -hmm. So, and for how long did you stay in this situation, like with this conflict inside of you? Do I have the Holy Spirit? And why am I like this? Why? It's missing something. Why, uh, when a Friday service comes, uh, my heart is beating fast? How long did it take for you to say, well, I need to do something else? How long? Pastor, I stayed like this for two years serving two here. Years. Two uh -huh. years. Uh, serving like these ups and downs. And yeah, two years. But there was a day that because I was talking to everyone, I was trying to solve to solve the problem, but I was going to God with emotions. Like every time I would mm -hmm. go to God, I would speak to people and I would go to God, but just feeling sorry for myself. I was so, so confused that, but there was one day specifically after those two years that I prepared to come to the service. I wasn't expecting anything. Uh, there was no excitement. I was just, actually it was the opposite. I was feeling so low, so tired because like two years and the more that um, like with time, it gets worse because you look back and you think I I'm, ne I'm never going to overcome this because my approach to the situation was, was always, OK, doubts comes from the devil, so I'm going to fight. But it was never ending because I was mm -hmm. always fighting, fighting, fighting. So this Wednesday, I prepared to come to the service. And it was different because that day I put my feelings, my emotions aside. I was just so tired and revolted. Like I used my intelli intelligence on that day because as I thought, I'm serving God, I'm not serving the devil. Sorry to interrupt you before you come to this point that is very important when you really receive the Holy Spirit. But you said something that using emotion, when you say that you were using your emotion before, before that, uh, uh, that Wednesday, what do you mean by using emotion? What can you tell about that? I wasn't just uh, when it comes to this problem, I wasn't using my faith. I, I would pray, but no crying. I would just feel I was just mm -hmm. feeling feeling sorry, like, oh, my God, what's happening? I, I was I felt like I was trapped. Because I didn't know where to go from there, you know. Mm -hmm. I was in the, I wasn't sinning, but I was, I wasn't well as well. So I didn't know. So I, 
I would go to God and just cry and then just feel confused. Like you, you, you feel like, oh, why? Why is it happening to me? Why am I the only person? Something like that. Exactly, exactly like mm -hmm. this. And then coming to that Wednesday, mm -hmm. when you said, because you said that instead of a, 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 a emotion now, there was like a, a holy indignation inside of you. In other words, it has to change. When was the day you said enough is enough that the Holy Spirit literally came upon you? So it was um, this, this service, it was a Wednesday service, and I was tired, I was revolted. I just thought to myself, I'm serving God. I'm not serving the devil. What, well, how come I'm serving God who is so great and I'm so like this, so dry? So I told this to God, God, I'm useless to you. I'm useless. I, I'm here. I'm serving you, but I'm a, like a dry branch. I'm so useless. I can't do anything. I feel like I can't bear fruits. I can't do anything. So you are the only one who has the, have the authority to look inside of me and see what's going on. Because I try to speak to people, but people cannot see inside of me. You are the only one who have this power to, to not only see what's going on, but to fix it, to solve my problem. So... I, I vomited all that frustration, all that, all that confusion. And when the pastor said, okay, you said everything. Now uh, God's going to speak to you. In the uh, service. In the service. Then I just kept quiet and the devil tried the last, because I was bombarded so much with thoughts. But on that day, I didn't care. I just I said, God, I'm here. I, I can't do anything else. I did my part. And if you are here, if you want me, I'm here. And I just kept quiet and it happened the holy spirit <laughs> came like there was no doubt mm -hmm. there was no doubt so i can say that there was a watershed a division between mariana before and mariana after that wednesday for sure so in the now you still have doubts no pastor. the devil works is his uh, main tool he works with doubts but now I have this, I have a, it's a fact, it happened. It's mm -hmm. not something that, oh, did it happen? No, I'm, I know, I have the assurance what happened on that day. Mm -hmm. I know uh, what I surrendered to God on that day. I know what God gave to me on that day. Like the only thing that came to my mind um, on that when it was like, it's over. Now I can serve God because this was my prayer. God, come upon me so I can serve you because this is what I wanted so much. And he came. You see, this is very strong. When she was sharing to me this testimony before, I even called her to be here because I know that many assistants now in this very moment, perhaps you are watching now Mar Mariana saying this and uh, maybe you say, this is me. This is me. I, I don't have this assurance. I'm not living in a sinful life. Maybe this is what you say. You have this conflict. I'm not living a sinful life, but it's missing something here. So she was serving God. She was doing everything all right to God. Everything, everything was okay. But she knew that something was missing to her. And that perhaps to you, you, hey, assistant, you, Perhaps is missing something in your life as well. You know, deep inside, you know. What can you do to sort it out, to sort this out? You, you saw what she said. Oh God! First of all, a whole indignation. This is the first step. Second, she said to God. She stayed to God. My God. I don't want to be a dried branch. I want your presence. I want your spirit to serve you. I don't want your, your spirit to say to people that I, I, I have your spirit, but to serve you. And perhaps this is what is missing to you. She stayed as an assistant without the Holy Spirit for two years. How about you? I'm even thinking here, Mariana, and uh, if it could last over two years, 
perhaps most definitely because how long was it how long ago was it that you received the holy spirit 6 years ago it was 2018 i when you received the holy, holy spirit, spirit. Yes. i i can i can think now that if 6 years ago if you'd not received the holy spirit perhaps you'd not be here now right. sharing this testimony because what can a person do without the holy yeah. spirit I, I can I, I understand that these two years was the mercy of God. Yeah. Like I can see clearly God was there keeping me because even when I was watching, for example, testimonies of former assistants, they would say, oh, I always had a little doubt that would hurt me, you know, mm -hmm. because I was so afraid that I didn't have structure to when I was being bombarded. I was so afraid that this would happen to me as well. I didn't want to leave the work of God. I, I mean, the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because without the Holy Spirit, there is no way to go until the end. This is it. Think about that. Take this purpose seriously and do what she did so that you may receive the presence of God. Okay? So may the Lord bless you greatly. This has been the Assistant in Focus. Next Monday, I'm going to be here back again. Thank you very much, Mariana. So God bless you greatly. Bye-bye. ever loved me like that Nothing and no one Can explain this feeling To touch like ever touch me like that I can Touch the God.